So we'll talk about probability as another measure for inferential statistics. Now what actually the word probability implies? Whenever we are talking about a expected relative frequency of an outcome. Now I have introduced many terms of course here, but let's understand each of them one by one. So what is outcome? Outcome simply put is the result of the experiment that you are trying to do. So outcome is the result. Now the second thing that I told was expected relative frequency. Expected relative frequency. So let's talk about frequency first. Frequency means how many times a thing repeats. So that is what is frequency. Relative frequency means the number of the times something happens relative to the number of times it could have happened. So that is what is the relative frequency. Putting in a very simple example, I toss a coin. So there is, there is a chance of getting one time head and the next time tail. So what is the chances 50-50? Because there are two options, head or tail. You have a 50% chance of either getting a head in a single toss or a 50% of chance getting tail in a single toss. The next is a case of a dais. So in a case of a dice, what happens? You have six faces. Let's say each of these six faces are numbered from one to six. Now when they are numbered from one to six, what is the probability of getting five on the dice? Uh, a very simple idea would be, since there are six options, one, two, three, four, five, and six, I want only five out of that. So the chance is one sixth. If I say I want three, the chance is again one sixth. So what I'm trying to understand here is, this is the expected relative frequency of the outcome that is there. And this is what is probability. So simply put, it is the possible successful outcomes to the total number of outcomes that are there. Again, if I am trying to understand this on a long run, let's say I am tossing a coin for let's say 10 times, what would happen? What would be the result? So every time there could be a chance of getting head or tail, head or tail and so on for all the 10 chances. And that's where we understand the long term uh, relative frequency interpretation of a probability. Similar to this, we also have a subjective interpretation of this term probability. Let's say today is a festive season and what happens is we as a family plan to go out for a dining. There is 90% chance that one of our favorite restaurants nearest to our home would be open tonight. So what it is? It is a subjective interpretation of the probability that you are trying to do and another way under which I can explain uh, probability into more detail is let's say you have a class of 100 students of this class of 100 students 20 of them are uh, seniors as compared to other in terms of let's say academic performance or in terms of any other criteria that you could consider now if I put a chance of getting one senior selected, what it would be? It would be 20 out of 100 because there are 20 seniors of the total 100 batch. So what is the probability of the senior getting selected is 20 by 100. Similarly, we also have the concept of range of probability. Now, how do we understand this as a range of probability? Uh, let's say I have a graph here. On this graph, I have the various outcomes that are given. Now, what is the chance that a student gets 9 and above marks? So, what I would do is, I would take those securing 9 and those securing 10, 9 and above. So, if it is from uh, 0 to 10, I would say, students getting 9 marks and students getting 10 marks would be pa part of the total number of the cases that are there. So let's say students getting 9 marks are 5. Students getting 10 marks are very few. Let's say 1 student and total there are 50 students. So what is the chance? The chance comes up to be 5 plus 1 divided by 50 that is 6 by 50 and that is the chance of students that I would be selecting would be having a score of 9 and up. Probability, what actually it is, it is simply a proportion. So when I say, going back to the previous example of head and 
tail so when you toss a coin you have head and tail so what is the probability of getting head and tail uh, of getting head or getting tail is 1 by 2 so there are two cases either head or tail and i could have in one time either head or tail so if i want to put up the cases of head it would be 1 by 2 and that is 0.5 so probability is explained as a proportion later on i can convert this proportion into percentage and i can say it's 50 percent so multiplied by 100 it comes out to be 50 percent similarly if i have a probability of less than 0.5 what does it mean there is less than 50 percent chance of that getting being selected so that is again how you represent a probability in terms of proportion and in terms of percentage also, the probability of the score is, uh, is between the mean and the z-score. So, that is again an important criteria that we need to understand. So, when we talked about the normal distribution curve in our previous section, we focused on how you have the one standard deviation plus minus variation that is seen and with the standard deviation above and below the mean you have the z score so you have one z score plus one z score and minus one z score in case of one standard deviation negative one standard deviation and positive one standard deviation that is seen let's say i toss a coin now what is the chance of getting head definitely i can get either head or tail so the chances is 50 percent but i cannot get head and tail at the same time so what does it imply it implies there are mutually exclusive outcomes mutually exclusive outcome means if one has happened the other cannot happen so if i have a outcome that is head that has come then there is no chance then that tail can come so what happens is under the addition rule of probability we use it when you have two or more mutually exclusive items so probability of ha happening of a or b would be taken into account so it could be either head or tail that could happen but further more interesting is the multiplication rule what happens in multiplication rule is we are trying to understand the probability of getting both of the two or more independent outcomes independent outcomes what does it imply i toss one coin i can get head or tail i toss another coin i can get head or tail so the probability of getting head on both the coins is how much so that would be the probability of getting a and b so what happens is in this case there is a chance of 50 percent in the other case there would be a chance of 50 percent so 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 multiply we uh, we multiply it and we get 0 0.25 and that's where we understand the multiplication rule the last is the conditional rule that we have already taken into account so we understand that passing an examination there is 50 percent chance that you would pass an examination but coming back to the same example that we talked about so if you are watching let's say exam race videos your chances increases to 80 percent and what it is it is a condition so that condition of watching the exam race videos is making this conditional probability so here are the basic rules of the probability that we have discussed and probability is one of the very essential parts of inferential statistics we'll be continuing our journey with the statistics the next topic in hand would be hypothesis and testing of hypothesis have a wonderful evening